Hey, Fort Niners fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today we are fresh off of the San Francisco 49ers. 48-46 win over the New Orleans Saints. We have injury news to update you guys, and then we're going to get into our grades, as we always do here on a Monday on the Chat Sports Only 49ers page. What a win by our 49ers. Are you kidding me? How much confidence did you have in Jimmy G in that final drive? How much confidence do you have in the defense the drive before to stop Drew Brees? I want to hear all about it in the comment section down below. But first off, the injury news because there's a lot to get to really, really quickly. Again, at the time of filming this video, we have a little bit of information. More information will continue to trickle out. We'll have an update for you guys most likely tomorrow on this channel. So let's just jump right into the biggest injury news, and that is center Weston Rickford. Uh, Rickford, excuse me, his lower leg seems to be a big, big problem as he was carted off the field and seen in crutches after the game. And head coach Kyle Shanahan in the post-game press conference says he is not uh, really that hopeful in terms of Ben or, uh, Weston Rickford actually being good to go going forward in the future. It seems like it's going to be a long-term leg injury, whether it's a broken leg or a knee or an Achilles. We've got to wait to figure out exactly what is going on. But it looks like backup Ben Garland will be replacing him. And Ben Garland did replace him in this game. And didn't look too great. So that's the big injury news right there. That the center Rick Berger is going to be out, at least for the foreseeable future. It seems like a bad leg injury in crutches in the boot as he was leaving the stadium. And head coach Kyle Shanahan does not seem too, uh, really too confident that this is going to be a, a short-term injury. So Ben Garland will be your replacement going forward. How will the 49ers um, uh, you know, react to this? How will they move forward with a patched offensive line? We'll have to wait and see. Other injury news, we do not know the full extent of D Ford, he re-injured his hamstring during the first half of this game. He did not return. Remember, he's been out a couple of weeks with a hamstring injury. This is the problem with hamstrings. They are very easy to re-injure, and so got to wait and see. But doesn't look like D Ford is going to be back anytime soon. The other two are a little bit better. Richard Sherman left the game with a hamstring injury, but really just didn't play the final series where he got a little bit of the confusion on some of those balls from Drew Brees. But it looks like, again, this one might not be as serious as the D Ford one because Sherman has not had a hamstring injury the entire season. So it could be a couple of games, could be a couple of days. We'll have to wait and see on Richard, but he did leave that game with a hamstring injury. And then K1 Williams, of course, our slot cornerback, he's in the concussion protocol after suffering a concussion in this game. He did have to leave. And again, this is part of the reason why Drew Brees was able to have five total touchdowns and score 46 points on our defense because they were not as healthy as we would like them to be. Now, we're going to grade the defense because they definitely struggled, but at least early on in this uh Injury report, some big names look like they could be out for the foreseeable future, including the center, including pass rusher D. Ford, Sherman, Williams. We'll have to wait and see. Again, more updates on this here at the Chat Sports Only 49ers YouTube channel in the near future. So go ahead and subscribe for that. We're going to have an ad right now, but it's perfect because I want to ask you guys this question. Which injury of these ones or maybe other ones you saw happen throughout the day is uh, the biggest one? We'll have the most impact on the 49ers. Let's let the ad run. Scroll down below, debate it. We'll have a pinned comment. I want you guys to reply to that comment. Which of these injuries is more serious? Which one of you guys are most concerned about? We'll go ahead and jump right into that. All right, let's quickly check on the NFC West standings, which look pretty darn good right now. Shout out to the Los Angeles Rams for really dominating Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday night football there at the uh, LA Coliseum. There you go. One game ahead of Seattle, 11 and 2 are the San Francisco 49ers, 10 and 3 for Seattle, 8 and 5 for the Rams, 3 and 9 for the Cardinals. The Rams again fighting for a wild card spot right now. They have Dallas next week, so that's a real possibility. Again, it's good to be up one game on Seattle. And it feels great right now to be the one seed, but you still are gonna have to beat Seattle coming up here in the next couple of weeks in Seattle. So not done yet. It's good. It's a great loss for the Seahawks. That means that technically that the Niners could slip up one time. You know, they play the Falcons on Sunday, even though they're not going to. But maybe they slip up there. So it gives you a little bit of extra leeway right now. But also, before we move on to our individual grades, just want to quickly give a shout out to the LA Rams for beating the Seattle Seahawks last night. You are number one in the NFC right now, 49er fans. Enjoy it. Hopefully, it is going to last. All right, we always give grades here on a Monday. Offense, defense, special teams, individual grades. Let's start it off with the offense. They get an A+. Plus. I mean, you score 48 points, you're going to get an A+. Plus. This was as good of an offensive of a performance as we have seen. They were, they were on fire today. I mean, absolute fireworks. It felt like a playoff game. It felt like uh, Kyle Shanahan was calling a playoff game with some of those, you know, Emmanuel Sanders touchdown passes and the little option play to use check who then pitched it over uh to the, the running back there were a lot of fun plays here jimmy g was great raheem moster was great debo and emmanuel were fantastic this was an electric offensive performance the only issue was is that the offensive line was a little 
bit iffy there. Obviously, losing your center cost is, is, uh, is part of the whole problem with that. But overall, this was, I mean, I keep, I feel like I said this like three weeks in a row now, but the best offensive performance I've seen from the 49ers, probably Jimmy Garoppolo's best game. He was absolutely fantastic. I mean, dialed in on a lot of these throws in the really tight windows. They get an A+. You have 516 total yards, 162 on the ground, 4 for 6 in the red zone. These are all positives to take away from this Niner offense. They have proven again and again that if they get into a shootout in the postseason, they are more than capable of winning. Shout out to George Kittle on that final drive. I mean, what a monster play there on 4th down and 2. And of course, the poise by Jimmy Garoppolo all day long. Absolutely fantastic. A really, really, really hard day for the Jimmy Garoppolo haters as he drops 48 on the Saints defense. Okay, was this the best offensive performance this year? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. I want to hear from you guys on this one because, yeah, you scored 50-something against Carolina, but that was Carolina. This is New Orleans. Pretty good against NFC South teams. Hopefully we do the same against the Falcons on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see. Defense, defense, defense. Yikes. Oh, my goodness. D minus. I mean, I know they, they were battling injuries. You're battling Drew Brees. But this defense got shredded the entire day. The secondary was absolutely torched, and the front four did not get hardly any pressure on Drew Brees. Yes, he got pushed around a little bit, but zero sacks. You think you've got to be able to get pressure on Drew Brees, and teams have been able to do that earlier this year. Atlanta had six sacks on him a couple of weeks ago. Now, nice force fumble. They shut down Alvin Kamara for the entire day, but overall, it's a little bit concerning to watch the defense give up 46 when we thought this was one of the best defenses in the NFL, and yet... Quarterback like Drew Brees and a wide receiver like Michael Thomas, I guess you could kind of shred anybody. So hopefully they figure it out. But 465 total yards, 4 for 4 in the red zone. I'm a little bit worried about the defense. What about you? Let me know down below. Are you guys concerned at all about the defense? Again, not majorly concerned. They should be able to crush Atlanta on Sunday. But this is the playoff type atmosphere we wanted to see. The offense showed up. The defense, on the other hand, especially that front four, did not really get after it at all. Okay, special teams, C-, minus, not very good. Yes, Robbie Gold hit both field goals. The one, obviously, to basically win the football game is very, very important. We all understand that. But at the same time, kick coverage was atrocious in this game. Punt return, kick return. Number 11, I forget his name for the Saints, gashed us all day long. Again, that helped Drew Brees get shorter fields and helped Drew Brees, again, not have to go down as far as four touchdowns. So, got to work that out. But C- minus overall for the 49ers special teams. Okay, how about before we jump into Jimmy Garoppolo's grade, which is pretty good, by the way, let me just say this. You guys keep doubting me when I say that every time the 49ers have lost, they've backed it up with a win. So when I tell you to use our friends at BetDSI to make money by betting on the Niners, you don't listen, and then we're here again today, right? Chatsports.com forward slash 40 or forward slash uh, bet. Use the promo code 49ers. They're going to play the Falcons this week. You probably have a great chance of winning some money by betting on the Niners. Again, Chatsports.com forward slash bet, promo code 49ers, you get 120% deposit bonus whenever you guys sign up for the first time. I know a lot of you guys have not tried this. You want to make some money, like bet, you know, gambling on sports, this is the way to do it with our friend at BetDSI. Okay, uh, individual grades here. Jimmy Garoppolo, A- minus on this one. He had a perfect quarterback rating in the first half. There were a couple of throws. This really should be an A+, plus, but I already wrote down A-, minus. so you know what? We're going to go with A-. minus. He was fantastic. I know there were a couple of throws here and there. You can make the argument that the throw to Emmanuel Sanders that was picked was a little bit behind. Not really, but Jimmy Garoppolo was fantastic. I mean, overall, this was a A-plus performance by Jimmy Garoppolo. He balled out 349 yards, four touchdowns, the one pick. It's, again, you just, just, just kind of go, tough day for the haters out there. I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was not going to be very good because he has really shown, especially against a good defense in the Saints, that he's just that. Very, very good. Okay, I mentioned injuries earlier on. You get updates on that most likely tomorrow on this channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Click the notification bell. That way you are the first to know what is up with our 49ers here. We have the fastest growing, and I say best 49ers YouTube channel here on the platform. So I encourage you guys, go ahead and give us a subscribe. Okay, this is going to be Raheem Mostert because he was great. A-plus for his grade. But the question is really, where is Tevin Coleman? And why has Tevin Coleman suddenly disappeared and not decided to be a factor on this team? Now, Mostert was great, but is he now the number two behind Matt Breida? He had the most carries, 10 for 69, and, and that touchdown, and also had like 50 receiving yards as well. Uh, uh, Breida was fine, you know? And again, Mostert was great, but where's Tevin Coleman is my question here, because he's supposed to be the one who's great running and catching the football. It's what you paid him for, not Raheem Mostert. So, great for Mostert. He gets an A+, but if I was going to give Coleman a grade, it'd be like a... A D minus. I mean, he did nothing at all. 
And I did have him on my fantasy team, so I was a little upset about that, but that's not the whole point overall. Like, we're just mad that Tevin Coleman decided to, again, not show up, even though he was supposed to be the feature back and was the feature back at one time for the 49ers. You know, he did show up Emmanuel Sanders, A-, minus, best game of the year for Emmanuel Sanders. Sure, he pushed off a little bit on that deep ball, but who cares? It was a touchdown. He was really, really great coming off a week where we were concerned about the rib injury lingering. Only two catches last week for Emmanuel Sanders. The only knock is you got to catch the football when it's thrown a little bit behind you by Jimmy Garoppolo. That interception was costly overall, but whenever you have seven catches for 157 yards, one touchdown on nine targets, that's as good as it gets. Emmanuel Sanders was great. Debo Samuel was really good in this one as well. The one-two punch across the middle is as scary as it gets for any team trying to face, obviously, our 49ers. Now, speaking of our 49ers, you know, Christmas is coming up. We got you guys covered here. If you guys want to go ahead and get in on some crazy good deals, how about chatsports.com forward slash 49 sale? There are a ton of authentic 49ers gear, hats, t-shirts, jerseys, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, socks, everything you can imagine. Feels like it's on sale right now over at chatsports.com slash 49 sale. Use the promo code or use the link down below in the description. Click on that. Get your holiday shopping done. You're going to need cold weather gear for playoff games. That's where you go. Chatsports.com slash 49 sale. Okay, defensive grades here. Eric Armstead gets a C plus. This is really for the entire defensive line. Not impressed by what I saw. Did they get pressure on Drew Brees? Sure. They did not get to Drew Brees. Zero sacks is not a way to win a football game when you are the best pass rushing team in the NFL. I was just surprised that overall they were unable to get to Drew Brees some more, which would be the storyline today had they lost this game because Drew went right down the field, scored the touchdown, took the lead. The Niners had to go kick a field goal to win this game. And if they had not made the field goal or they had lost, then the real conversation right now would be the fact that these defense got shredded and they had zero pressure on Drew Brees the entire day. Got to get more pressure. Got to be better. It'll be easier on Sunday against Atlanta because they have a patchwork offensive line. But at the same time, not impressed by the Niner defensive line. What grade did you guys give the Niner defensive line overall? What did you guys think in the comments section? Am I overreacting a little bit too much, or am I pretty much dead on with this one? I think I'm being dead on, but we'll have to wait and see overall. Okay, uh, last defensive grade here goes to Fred Warner. He gets a B-. I get a lot of praise to Fred Warner, was the NFC Defensive Player of the Month for November. This was not his best day. I thought he got beat a lot in pass coverage, and I thought that his overall work as a linebacker was not what it needed to be. Remember, Jared Cook had some crazy good catches early on until he got knocked out with that head injury. And even later on in the game, the backup tight end, is it Hill is his name? And of course, there's Taysom Hill, the uh, quarterback, but Hill, the other tight end. It just wasn't a great day for Fred Warner and still not a very good uh, stat day either. Three tackles, one tackle for a loss, no sacks, no quarterback hits. Breeze had a monster day, which you understand, but Fred Warner is a big reason why the defense normally does not allow monster days, and he really didn't do too well and that one's we'll have to wait and see uh in terms of how great the defense can respond to this game again the takeaway is that the offense was lights out it was the defense that was not at all and so you want to have more complete games going forward but we won and we still have the number one track the number one seed so you know it feels pretty good overall speaking of which final question here will we be the number one seed type one down below for yes type two down below for no tell me why also i'll throw one extra grade in here defensive uh, or discipline and penalties you know, it's hard to believe we had six penalties for 67 yards. Didn't feel like it, but we did. You get a C-plus on the discipline the penalties. I haven't had to do this one in a long, long time, but got to take care of the football. Obviously not throwing the ball away. That's more discipline. You've got to be better on uh, punt, punt coverage and kick coverage, and you also did not have 10 penalties, which was five more than the New Orleans Saints. Let's work on that a little bit more and see what happens going forward. Again, this is a great, great game for the San Francisco 49ers. A really, really great game overall. They have got to be better in some categories, especially pass rush on the backside, penalties against these good football teams. But at the same time, you drop 48 on the Saints and you beat Drew Brees on the road. And now you're 10 and 2 and have a chance to be the number one overall seed. So it's happy thoughts here on a victory Monday. Congratulations to all the fans out there. We'll see what happens this week. We'll update you guys on injuries. And we'll also, of course, Get ready for the Falcons on Sunday. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.